Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Roger Hayes, uh, Chairman of the British Constitution Group. Um, if you haven't heard of our organization before, then essentially uh, we came together in about um, the middle of 2008 and the purpose was to do something about what was going on. And if you ask the question, um, have we made any progress? Um, the answer is we most certainly have. And um, I've been focusing on the courts. Um, I'm in the courts quite a bit. Uh, we're challenging the system, we're challenging the judges, and uh, what I can tell you is, first and foremost, when I walk in the, in the courts in Birkenhead, they all say, good morning, Mr. Hayes, <laughs> and they all say um, they quite like it when we go in because it's always interesting for them. Um, the, the last case I was in was about two weeks ago, and as I walked in the court, the first thing is we don't get magistrates anymore, we get judges. And the first thing the judge said was, we said only one person in the court, right? They're actually having meetings before the court cases of which we're involved in to, to decide how to handle us, okay? The courts all over the country have been told how to deal with us, right? They're scared of us. And the reason they're scared of it is because we, under, we have uncovered what they're doing, okay? They are breaking the law in our courts. And I'll give you a couple of examples of how things have progressed. But essentially what we've uncovered is simply this. That our common law courts have been taken away from us. And we have got a, a system of administrative courts. But they're not even courts. It's a, a system of administration that's being forced upon us. And that means that when we go into courts, we are not able to actually defend ourselves using our, our, our court system, our, 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 our system of justice. And essentially what that's about is our constitution has been ripped up and thrown out, okay? And that is the one thing that defends our freedoms and our liberties is our constitution. And we've got to fight for it, and we are fighting for it. Mm -hmm. and, and we are fighting so hard now that we are making an impact. As I say, that um, other, other uh, colleagues who are working in the system around the country, uh, we go into the courts, and as I say, that they have meetings beforehand, and what we have got feedback on is that the security of the courts are actually running the meetings beforehand. And the reason the security in the courts are being involved is because they're scared that we're going to arrest another judge. Yeah? And we will, but we will bide, bide, bide our time. Okay? So we are pushing the agenda. We are driving them. They are not driving, driving us at all. Okay? Now... Um, Last week, it's almost amusing because what their courts now realize is that um, we're not scared of them. They're scared of us. And what we are sending a message is slowly but surely we're catching them out. Eventually, we'll be putting judges in jail. And these, these people are corrupt. They're running this system for their benefit, not our benefit. And we know it. We've caught them out and we're progressing. Now, when I walked into the judge, um, into the, the court, uh, the, the judge who was actually at the bench, I know him. He and I have sort of crossed swords before. And before I could open my mouth, he said, I want three police officers in this court with handcuffs. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I've made an impact. I haven't even opened my mouth yet. Okay. And... Um, he wouldn't allow any of the observers in. So much, much for open courts, eh? It's incredible. So I said, why aren't I allowed my um, observers in here? Because we're supposed to be able to see that justice is done, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want people seeing what, that justice is being done because it's not being done. And that's the truth of the matter. <laughs> uh, this little episode with this particular judge, he then turned around to the council. This is another liability order. I think I'm in my fifth year now, so I'm a regular in the, in the courts. And... Look, the council officials shake, they're very scared, they're very nervous, and they, they, they're intimidated because we're challenging everything they're doing. The council um, official was asked to give her reasons or, or read out her evidence, and she, she prattled through a, a, a bit of nonsense. And then he turned around and he said to me, you tell me why you're not going to pay your council tax. Tell me now. And I just turned around and said, what's your name? He, he don't like me, he doesn't like me at all. And he said, they all know me here. I said, what's your name and how do you spell it? And he said, it's Abelson. And how do you spell it, sir? 
A B E L A B E L. It brings them down. It belittles them. It tells them we're not scared of them, and these are our courts. Okay, and we are we will have our our laws back. Okay. I then said to the judge, are you acting under your oath of office today? And he said, of course I am. And I brought my warrant from the Queen. <laughs> now what made him bring his warrant for the Queen, from the Queen? Because we've been asking these people, are you acting under your oaths of office? They're talking about it all over the country. The magistrates, the judges, the courts are all talking about us. Because we have moved this thing through and we are dynamic in what we're doing in the courts. I said, that's excellent, sir. That means this is a common law court. And he said, yes, of course it is. I said, well, that's, that's excellent. That means all the rules apply for, for witnesses. He said, yes, of course it does. And do all the rules apply for evidence? He said, yes, of course it does. I said, do all the rules apply with regards to proof of contract? He said, yes, of course it does. And I said, in that case, I'll cross-examine the counsel's witness on the stand under oath now. And he said, no, you can't. <coughs> At which point he said to the police, get him out of here. So the police moved on me. I said, gentlemen, I'll go of my own volition. So I packed up my bags, my books, I walked out of the court, and the police escorted me all the way through to the, to the front of the court. And of course, I'm smiling because I anticipate this is exactly what's going to happen. We know what, the way it works. They don't want us in the courts finishing these court cases because they know we're right and they're wrong. Okay. When I got outside the courtroom, I said to the three police officers, three, not two, three, um, what's your names? They wouldn't give me their names, so what are they scared of? I said, well, I'll take your numbers. So I took their numbers. We immediately went round to the pub and we wrote up a document and we drew up a summons to bring the judge back to the court to explain his action in the court. Right, so we actually laid a, a complaint about the judge. Uh, the next thing we did, I wrote a letter to the chief constable and I laid a complaint against the three constables who'd actually removed me from the court because they had taken me out of my own court hearing for no lawful reason. <coughs> So that's, being, that's ongoing business. So we're actually now starting to complain about the police. And what's going to happen is the police are, got, are going to start saying, that's a good question, why did we take him out of the court? Right? Because the police don't want complaints against, against themselves. It goes on their records. So the next time the judge says, take him out of the court, the police should be saying, what for? So we are having an impact. So... Within the week, I was in front of a magistrate, in fact, the clerks of the justices, um, explaining why the judge should be brought before the court and explain his actions, because he was acting unlawfully. He had no lawful reason to exclude me from my court hearing. The reason he wanted me out of there, because he knew I was right and they were wrong. And that's a good lesson to all of us, okay? So they now know we're not scared of them. They now know that they, we've caught them out of what they're doing. So what we've got is a situation in this country where our, our, our common law courts have actually been removed and we're fighting to get them back. All right, so, so that's the situation with regards to the court thing. Now what I want to explain to you is actually what is happening with regards to the likes of council tax. It's not just council tax. Uh, we're uncovering the procedures that are going through with a lot of other things as well. But the reason I'm going to concentrate on the, on the council tax is because I've made it my particular thing to, to get to the bottom of how this, this whole business is, is being orchestrated against us, how the system is working to oppress us. And I promise you this, we are being oppressed. It's subtle, it's slow, but it's definite. We are being oppressed. This is what should happen with council tax. If the council have a legitimate... Um, claim against anybody who they feel should be paying counsel. I'm not going to talk about the legal fiction tonight, okay, because obviously that's a different issue. How many people in this room have heard about the legal fiction? All right, so had I asked that question three years ago, nobody would have put a hand up. So, so it proves the point that's getting out there. And I think it's also very important that it's not, it's not circulating amongst the same people. It's spreading further afield. 
Um, so what we're doing, we're talking, and it is getting out there. And this is, this is an exponential curve. Um, you know, there's so many people know, and that curve goes up, and then it, it goes in a steep bank. I promise you, within 12 months, this thing is, is, it is global already, but it's, it's going to increase quite dramatically. Um, to give you an example, somebody handed me this um, before, which I'd not seen it earlier, but it's quite interesting. This is a, um, a report from, from Brussels, and it's um, the MEP Batten, who's UK, uh, UKIP uh, uh, MEP, and he was asked to make comment about the uh, riots in Egypt, and he, one of his comments is, all governments, even tyrannies, derive their power from the people. There's a parallel here with Britain, he added. Successive governments betrayed our people and surrendered rights to the EU. Under Magna Carta, the English have the right of lawful rebellion. Okay. Who's he got that from? Exactly. Okay. We are driving this forward. So that was an interesting point. All right. So what is actually happening vis-a-vis -vis, um, the... Council tax, how, are the government, how is the council going about collection and what are they doing wrong? What they're supposed to do, if they feel they've got a claim, the regulations require, the, this is the council tax um, administration and enforcement regulations of 1992, are quite clear that they must lay a complaint with the court. That requires that they go down and either, as I did, I went to the court and I laid my complaint. Now you can lay your complaint physically or verbally. Clearly in the case of the council it would be a, a, a written submission to the court. So they must lay a complaint. Having laid the complaint it should be viewed by a justice of the peace who would then decide whether there is a valid case to answer and the court would then issue a summons. That's the way it's supposed to work. The summons would then come out to the individual concerned and they would then turn up uh, at the court and actually either answer the charge or, or, or whatever. Um, what's actually happening is this. The council do not go to the court and lay a complaint. They don't bother. They simply issue a summons. Now the key point of course is that they, they themselves, the council, issue a summons. And what you'll find is they issue a summons on a piece of paper. In my case, the, the piece of paper reads the Wirral Magistrates Court, and it's signed at the bottom by Norman Draper, who is the clerk to the justices for the Merseyside region. That piece of paper is produced by the council. It is not produced by the court. That is fraud. They are committing fraud, and the courts know they're committing fraud. Now, what I have done is I've gone into the courts and I've said, could you please give me all the information with regards to the complaint that has been laid with regards to this summons? And the courts tell me there is no information. And I've said, well, there should be. And the clerks, not the clerks, the justice, but the legal advisors there have said, well, um, that's the way we do it now. Right? So what you have is for expediency, they are ignoring the regulations, they're ignoring acts of parliament, and they're just doing it their way. And this collusion between the council and the court is unlawful. When you go to a court, you're supposed to be in a place where you have a neutral judgment between you and the other party, the plaintiff, plaintiff and, the, and the respondent, and yet here you've got the council and the courts colluding, right? So in the courts, we've then asked the question of the legal advisor. I've asked the question of legal advisors, is the court responsible for its own paperwork? And of course, the legal advisors know where's that, where that's going, and they don't, they're not inclined to answer. Okay? And we have, been, we have been catching them out. I've been in court and said to the magistrates, this piece of paper is a fraudulent document. You cannot pass any decisions based on a fraudulent document. They just ignore you, because they don't know what to do. Okay? So with regards to the um, documentation, both the um, laying of complaint is not being done, the summons is being fraudulently created by the councils, and then the judgments by the magistrates, despite them knowing, they knowing that the, that the documentation is fraud, they just 
if you like, stamp the, 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 the paperwork that the council issued them. Now, what's actually happening is that room that you're in is not a court. It is not a court of law. It's an administrative process. It's just a room. And, of course, um, if we've all discussed the legal fiction, we understand the process, that we're, 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 we're dealing with a, um, a claim against the legal fiction, not against the individual, the, the flesh and blood man, as it were. But moving on from that, what happens there and after? You will then get a letter from the council saying that they have got a liability order against you. Now, if there was a liability order um, officially created by the court, then it would, be, it would be on the court record. Again, the regulation states that if a liability is order, a judgment or liability order is ordered by the court, it must go in the court record. So I have been down to the court, I have written to the court, and I have said to the court, would you please provide me all outstanding judgments in the name of Mr. Roger Hayes or Roger Hayes, etc. And they have written back and said, there are none. Okay? And the reason there are none is because it wasn't a court. Now, with a liability order, if it was a real liability order, the um, individual who has, um, has the order f for their benefit, if they want to then collect on it, remember, a liability order is, is a, an order by the court to pay the money. So if you don't obey a court order, that is contempt of court. And, of course, what they can do is they, they can then ratchet it up to the next level. So the next level is this, that if you don't pay that liability order, the court, on application by the council, would then issue a warrant of distress. And they would then issue a warrant of distress and give it to a court bailiff, who would then come knocking on your door. Of course, they don't do that either, do they? What they do is they pretend they've got a liability order, and they ring up the local bailiffs, and they actually use those as debt collectors. And they give them a little piece of paper, and the bailiff comes knocking on your door. When the, the bailiff knocks on my door, I tell him to go away, politely. Okay, there's no point being rude about this. Um, and they do go away. And, of course, the next process is that the, the, the council decide the process by which they, 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 they go forward next. Now, if this was all legitimate, they would go through, they could go through the process, um, the lawful process using the court system, etc., but they don't. They, this is a private um, format they're using, and the whole thing is a scam from start to finish. Now, as most of you know, I have sort of well prepared for all of this, and I decided to take it to the next level. Um, they decided they were going to bankrupt me or bankrupt the legal fiction. Of course, they, they can't bankrupt the man. They can't bankrupt the flesh and blood man because there's no contract. Suffice to say that the next thing, I allowed this to go through. I was actually busy on the day. I've had a letter from the official receiver, and the official receiver has said, you are bankrupt. And I wrote back and said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and he wrote back and said, yes, you are. And I said, no, I'm not. It's the legal fiction, Mr. Roger Hayes, that they bankrupt. Got nothing to do with me. And he wrote back and said, there is no such thing in fact or in law. So I wrote back with a copy of a dictionary with the definition of, lawful, of, of the legal fiction. Yeah? And I said, Yes, there is. You're wrong. I'm right. He said, get in here Friday at 9.30 so we cross-examine you. And I said, that's fine, but we're all equal in the eyes of the law. I will come in, I will have a tape recorder, and I have a witness. And I will ask you the following questions. And if you answer these questions, then I'll answer yours. And he phoned up and he cancelled the meeting. <laughs> He's taking it to the High Court. So I'm going to be in the High Court on the 28th of October. And that's going to be an interesting day, because I'm not scared of the courts, and I'm going to be asking the courts some very interesting questions. And the questions I'm going to be asking the court is, how is it that a judge can take a fraudulent document and determine that there is a liability order that doesn't exist, and to determine that a man or, or the legal fiction should be made bankrupt on lies and deceit in the courts? I would like them to explain that. Do you know what? They won't answer the question, will they? Do you know why? Because they know that we're right and they're wrong. So that's the process that we're up to now. Okay, we're challenging the courts. We've, undercovered, we've uncovered the fact that we have got a system of, of, of Roman law that's been introduced in the country. And our position is to spread the word, to tell people what's going on in the courts, 
And an interesting thing I believe that's happening is that the courts themselves are starting to say the people in, who work in the court don't or haven't previously fully understood what's going on. And now that we're exposing them, they must be saying to themselves, well, why are we doing it this way? Why don't we do it the right way? Okay, so there's a very good question. If they're able to do it the right way, why don't they do it the right way? What's going on here? Well, I'll tell you what I think is going on here. When they supposedly have the liability order, right, it's not in the book. But when you're paying the money to the council, there's no record through the courts. Do you know what I think is going on? I think we've got money laundering going on here. I think they're stealing our money. Okay? And so we're going to be investigating this key point and finding out where the money's going. And I'll tell you what, they're going to get more and more concerned because every time we scratch a bit, we find something out. It's funny, you know, my instincts, every time I've had an instinct for something, I've got so close to the reality, that's when they start getting nervous and we actually start to uncover more and more. I would like to make a bet here and now that we're going to uncover the fact that these people are thieves and they're stealing our money, right? And we're going to get them and we're going to put them in prison, okay? And we're going to chase the judges and we're going to chase the, the, the chief constables. All of this team that are pressing us, we're going to chase them until we get our, our day in court, okay?